Hello and welcome to this week's look at stunts and action on film. Uh, thanks for joining me. Um, if you've heard the podcast this week, you will know that um, February is a tricky month, um, certainly for, for many of us who in the British, um, in Britain anyway, who are fans of the, uh, the British Stunt Register, um, because we celebrate the passing of two fabulous uh, individuals um, who really made a, made a mark, certainly made a big difference uh, to the world of action and to many, many individuals either within the business uh, or just people who look on in awe at what's happened in the past. Those two individuals are Roy Alon, who I've spoken to you about on a number of occasions before, and Tip Tipping, uh, both of which very familiar faces, and uh, you'll have seen them in all sorts of different guises along the way and uh, different uh, films and television productions. Um, but, you know, you, you may not know as much about them as, as maybe you'd, you'd like to. So this is the idea of being able to celebrate their lives, their careers uh, as uh, performers. And uh, we're going to look at some of their work along the way and uh, we'll try and pick out some bits and pieces. It really, to uh, th these names, they're very familiar. You see them on 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 uh, on credit lists, um, and this is how really I started my fascination with it. Would you see the same names? You see those names, you know, reoccurring on this television show and that movie and this thing here. And long before the internet, you have to remember that the internet is still very relatively young in in comparison to to the type of stuff for many many years that's why when i was doing interviews with a, with a lot of performers um over the years one of the first questions that i always asked was and what did you do on american werewolf in london because i saw this huge cast list uh and credit list and then saw all oh, that name there and this name there and i wanted to ask them you know because i didn't know you know it was a, a very rarely did um, did performers get those types of of interview? Um, as I've said before, many people who many stunt performers who were interviewed back then were interviewed by pre by the press, and, and and all the press wanted to know about was if there was any gossip um, about the star. Got any gossip on the star? I I I'll bet you have. I'll bet you got some gossip about the star. And, and and how much do you earn then? Yeah, how much is this worth? It's money, money and gossip was all it was about. And Roy, uh, God love him, was was really, really um, a, a huge reason why I'm I was able to do what I'm able to do, because when all these people were asking about gossip and money, and I wanted to know about you know the air rams, and I wanted to know. Um, what sort of harness he would use for this, and, and the helmet, and the neck. I wanted to know technical stuff. I was, I was, I was a technical buff. I wanted to know how much, how you fold um, uh, a cardboard box correctly, so that it just, you know, folds, uh, it crushes when you fall into it, as opposed to. You know, you have the, the 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 boxes that you have bits and pieces turn up into. If you if you landed in that, it would go flat. You have to fold it in such a way that it keeps the air. And he would tell me all this. This is what I found fascinating, and and he was very very good in going to people and saying. You know, we've had some issues with the press in the past, but if you want to have a word with this guy, he's okay. You know, he's on our side. There's no issues here, um, and. Um, it, it, Put me forward for the um, for going to speak with the uh, uh, the stunt committee uh, way back when, um, in connection with a publication that I was trying to do at the time, which was to you know put a green light on showing a bit of a bit of love for for the stunts, stunts magazine as it was way back when, and uh, you know at the time that was that was something that he was he was happy to do he's very happy to get me on set and ask me stuff which was which was fantastic and so you know i owe him a great deal um 
tip I always wanted to meet and again through Roy I was able to do this and uh, we kept in touch you know which was really nice and again this is this is before the days of of you know messaging um, or texting um, tip passed away in 93 so um, and I rang him a week or so before he went off to Northumberland to do the uh, 999 reconstruction and uh, we had to chat about stuff, you know, and he's, how are you, how are they? It just really general bits and pieces, but he was a really nice guy. Um, and, uh, you know, we were always, he had a terrific sense of humour. And we are always being in a position to have a laugh about stuff. Um, and that was always the nice thing. You look at certain individuals. Uh, somebody once said many, many moons ago, you must never meet your heroes. They will always let you down. Um... And I've never found that to be the case. You know, my heroes happen to be the stunt professionals. And I've never been in a situation whereby I have met one and thought, oh, I wish I'd never met them. That, that I've got this image of them here and it's just blown. That's never happened. That has never, ever happened. Uh, whenever I've met any stunt performer, coordinator, you name it, whatever they've been doing, whether they are just on the register, whether they are whether they've been established for many, many years, they've been terrific. Um, and that's always been very, very important to me. And Roy set that in stone. So him enabling me to meet Tip, for instance, was was just terrific. Um, and uh, I cherish the brief time that I had with both of them, um, and as I'm sure everybody does uh, in this, this month. And we remember the good times and uh, from our point of view, from a viewer's point of view, and from you know uh, an experienced point of view, we like to remember the action-packed stuff. And with a bit of luck, we're going to get uh, something that's going to float your boat right now. So let's start with Roy. Have a little look at some of his work. His the shapes he makes in the air, jumping from his viaduct into an airbag. It's a very distinctive look, a very distinctive fall. This is Bird of Prey. He's actually doubling stunt woman Elaine Ford here, believe it or not, before she became a stunt person. Roy again, looking very lovely in a skirt. This is the big fall from Green Ice. All the exterior shots are Roy outside the bank in Mexico City. And he is being hoisted back up to the roof. And this is the shot. It's been created that the fan descender has been created uh, Dave Bickers and Vic Armstrong working together to come up with this. So he's, the character's being hoisted back to the roof where Omar Sharif is uh, atop awaiting the return of uh, Green Ice Jade uh, in this instance. And he cuts the harness. There's Omar. Bang. Now, this I've slowed it down, but this is the fan descender dropping straight into camera. That's 100 feet there. Then they cut away, and then there's the high fall of another 100 feet. Look at his arms, rotating, rotating, watching, and ready to tuck and go. And then they add this landing area on afterwards. Absolutely magnificent. This is some of the stuff he's done with um, Les Dawson, television series called Says Les. A fall guy, look. Pratt Falls, that's what he's doing. Whee, bang. Um, the window cleaner. Oh, oh, oh. He used to have a window cleaning round on the Chapel Hill Road. Chapel Town Road, I beg your pardon. In Leeds. Um, jovial mechanic. Whee. <laughs> and the visual gag. Trip, down he goes, and zoom into the sign. <gasps> Accident prevention. Now, Les Dawson becomes Royal on, and apparently the crew were taking bets to see how far he would get. And he did pretty well, all things considered. Ooh, before that happened. Wow. Space Raiders, Riders, whatever it's called, that's Lex Malloy lying the bike down. And um, done a couple of ways. Roy was going to do it first, rehearsed it, injured himself. The impact when it comes here, everything's being pulled in together by wires. The bike he's on is wired. So he injured himself in rehearsal, and uh, he needed to get it done again. So he brought in Tip Tipping, who then does the dismount. 
clearing the fairing over it goes keeping it straight into an airbag and you might just be able to see once the pyrotechnics can kick in a bit more you'll see some cabling on the back of the bike which is preventing it from going further any it's just unbelievable now that's the dummy and then the landing there and the subsequent role is lex milloy so we created the accident and uh, is responsible for doubling barry roy being saved by superman on superman 3 um he loved that that was a photograph that was over the top of his television as i seem to remember doubling herbert lom in curse of the pink panther making sure he's not thumped by the wheelchair on the way down so he tethers it to be on the safe side and this is footage of his high fall from the opening of escape to athena he's up in the roof compartment on a little parapet he's got to tuck then open up for the fall and then tuck again for the landing and bang into a landing area later on doubling sonny bono this is rehearsal footage of him practicing this particular piece of rope work and again in the film this is the shot itself down he goes woof gives it a fair friends with everybody including telly now let's have a look at some of tip stuff a whole bunch of bits really this is him as the burglar in the episode of bottom i don't know whether you remember this He's just hit aid, and he's just about to thump Rick, although he did get Christmas cards from Rick, so they were on good terms. Bang. <laughs> and then has a little look at your man who is stuck to the ceiling. The type of stuff that Tip would get involved with, lots of parachuting stuff, because he was very good at uh, parachuting, and then incidents like this. So people are jumping out, and this his character then gets hung up, for instance. So he would do a lot of that. That's an episode of Bergerac, I think. Again, similar, being hung up, and the, an aerial shot of somebody hanging underneath a plane like that. It's extraordinary to look at, but worked out to the last detail. He was always very specific about that, and knew, knew his stuff. Really, really, very, very professional. More falling. This one, of course, you may remember from Morse. He was PC Dane. He's getting beaten up by Terry Richards there. And again, another example. This is Casualty. Bang! Hit by Jonathan Ross. And this is him in Death Wish 3 about to get a serious headache from a piece of wood on the other side of the door. Up, oh, bosh! Oh dear. Over he goes, spotting his landing. Lovely. This is the New Statesman. And again with Rick. He's the guy under the newspaper. So... The head is to get set on fire, which is there. Then this guy throws obviously a drink on it, and it splashes. Now look at his hands. I've slowed it down. His hands, his trousers. Now, and I've slowed it down because he has to start moving his hands about. He, I think he's really caught himself a light down there. They're expecting it to stay on the paper, and he's having to move his hands about just to try and keep himself safe. Um, but extraordinary stuff nonetheless. Now, we're going to have a look at... For me, some of this great footage, behind-the-scenes stuff from Zero Option, is Chris Kelly. This week on Kellyvision, we're looking at stunts. And I'm here at Hapenny Green Airfield near Birmingham, where Central Television are filming a sequence for their action-adventure drama, The Zero Option. Now, the stunts, of course, are not being done by the actors themselves, because if an actor gets hurt, that means he's off work for a few days, production stops, costs a lot of money. <clears throat> so the people who do the tough work are called stunt doubles, and they're Andy and Tip, very experienced men here behind me. Roy Alon is the stunt arranger on this film. He's worked on Superman and Bonds Galore and Dempsey and Makepeace. So let's have a word with them and see how they plan the whole thing. Roy, can you take a couple of minutes out? Uh, Potentially very dangerous. Indeed it is, uh, yes, and uh, an awful lot can go wrong, so you need belt and braces, which is why we double link every piece of equipment that we've got. We've got some links in the plane there that we will lock onto. When so you say double link, you mean there's two of everything? There is two of everything, <clears> because <throat> you should never rely on one single piece of equipment. And the equipment that you use, the best that money can buy is only just good enough for, on a stunt like this. Because when all said and done, the two men are risking their lives, and anything should go wrong, 
we could have a very big problem. So tip tipping will be attached to the plane at all times by this? Yes, by both links. <clears throat> and uh, same with Andy here, our second stunt artist. He's got a double link on there. And the two men will be hanging outside the plane, executing a fight, uh, the end of which one of the men is seen to fall. Now, do they know here on the ground how that fight will go, Tip? I mean, or do you organise that in the end? Well, Roy Allen has uh, given us his idea of how he wants the fight to go, and so we'll work our best on the ground. We do a dirt dive, as it were, on the best on our ground of what we want to achieve. But a only dirt dive? A dirt dive. It's a, it's a skydive phrase. Uh, we rehearse on the ground what we're going to do in the air. Yes. I and mean, as soon as we're in the air, we'll find out the restrictions yes, we, we may have uh, and have to alter accordingly. Yeah. That's why I want to lock onto this main spar here. Yeah. Yeah. See, that is really good and solid. If I could find two more like that, we've cracked it. I don't want to use these because they're just on rails and they're very flimsy. Hanging from here and down, you're going to be really low. I'd rather one hand was on here and your right hand was on there, yeah. leaving one hand free, so that if all this lot fell apart and you drop down, then you're onto this. So I use this as a primary and this as a secondary, because if you get onto this one, you're way down and it's a hell of a climb back. Yeah. Oh, oh exhausting. Why, well, shattered. Well, tip was out first, I think it was hanging. To quite a degree, I came to take my fixing. It's just one of those things that the fixing wasn't come loose some way. Anyway, when we got out there, I knew we sort of have to assume when the guy is tired. I knew that I was getting tired, so I knew that Tip must be very tired at that point, wasn't it? But you get pretty, you know, into it all, so you don't realise how tired you are until you start to sort of compress, pull in on muscles again, you know, and they're getting tired, aren't they, out there? Yeah, we, I was hanging out there for maybe two minutes before he joined me, and when I'm there by myself, I haven't got anyone to, to buff it with the slipstream. Yeah. So, is that much more powerful than you thought it would be? Um, I, I'm used to it from skydiving. What I'm not used to is letting it play with me. Andy eventually came to join me. I say it was, it was exhausting, but we're still happy. We, we couldn't speak to each other in the air. Obviously, it's too noisy. We already agreed the preset fight routine, which we went through two or three times. Scrabbling and slipping, scrabbling and slipping. I found I could take one hand off and float back. He would go and put a hand on my face, and I'd hold his hand onto my face and like he was fighting. But you can't communicate at all, like Well, you can't hear each other, no. It's just... <laughs> Something like that, that's all I could do. And then the fun started. Um, plan A was present my hand to Roy, the arranger, and Andy to pull me in. And they were heaving and nothing was happening. And I, <laughs> it's I was trying now, to get all there. my yeah, strength so. together, knowing I was going to need it in a minute. And that didn't work. In the end, we found, so from now on we know, that even with no, no strength in the arms, it's strength in your legs. Now, I, of course, Roy led that far out, he was right out the plane. I could just present my knee to him there, yeah. and he held on. Um, so how many times will you rehearse this again now? We shot it, Fantastic. we shot the rehearsal, yeah. and there is footage there to use for all the hanging stuff we need. Yeah. We now need to go, we no need to do any more rehearsals, we're ready to shoot every time now. Back at Hakeney Green, they've finished rehearsals, and they're going for a take. The cameraman is strapped into the helicopter to fly alongside the plane and get the best shots of the action. He's using a very expensive camera mount, which stops the camera from bouncing around during flight and gives you a steady picture on the screen. The stuntmen are making a living the hard way, giving the action everything they've got. In the finished drama, the sequence will look fantastic, and no one will think about the dangers and expense involved in getting it on film. The cameraman seems to have got the shots he needs, and they're back on the ground. Let's see how the two stunt doubles feel after their taste of the high life. going up there the wind is it's a lot stronger than you believe really hanging off helicopters we're okay we've been lucky in the past it's only 60 mile an hour 40 mile an hour but up there doing 90 and 100 it's it's a little <laughs> bit like being dragged behind a speedboat when you've fallen off water skis and you can't let go of the <laughs> ski toe good, good, good description similar, yeah and the coat if we're gonna lose your jacket tip yeah it whips <laughs> me in the face as well the the uh the, the, it seems to take so long for the ground... I mean, it wasn't the ground camera's fault. We, we took a long time for the ground cameras, basically. We did three takes, didn't we? That was spectacular, through. seeing you hanging out at low and, level. Uh, the problem then was, because my cable wasn't up my arm as before, it was hanging free, I suddenly realised we were going right over the camera. He sat in the wing strut, and I had to jam my hand up to, to hide the cable. The so all the strain was on the arms again, and do a bit of acting as well. But now it you're is, exhausted, yeah? A little bit. Shattered. Yeah. And, and a little he, bit, I've got to tell you. 
I mean, he needs all the strength in the world because he's going to hang out and give me a brace so I can pull myself in the plane. Yes. And I was shattered. You want more money, don't keep saying that. Shattered. No, they were. We the money, sir, before. They we started left. panicking when Here's I. Just Griffin, the producer. Yeah, yeah, he's 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 well, you did it. You did it safely. Well done, Absolutely. Griffin. Fantastic. I can't wait to see how it looks. So it's remarkable when that door comes off, and that's Tip there and Andy fighting. It's such an exciting sequence. I remember watching it when it was on television. It's just unbelievable. And then to think that these two guys were out there doing it for real. Look at him dropping all the way down. And then as the camera comes, plane flies along. And that image there of the, uh, of the two of them struggling, it's magnificent. Tip below, Andy above, Roy in. If you've never seen the Zero Option, check it out. Um... And if you haven't got it, there is an upload coming, I think, so you'll be able to watch it. But it's great fun, and that's magnificent. That, um, a couple of things, that high fall in green ice is just majestic. It's majestic. It's absolutely majestic. Um, it's, a, it's, you know, it's, it's practically, it's the first. It's the first time that a fan descender was used. We saw it again the same one, by the way. <laughs> it's not another fan descent. It was the same one that we saw not too long ago on Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. This is it. And used in a different capacity. But the, the purpose of the exercise was to create this fan descent and create this extraordinary shot whereby Roy falls into camera. So... It's 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 pretty much a 200 foot fall because he does the first 100 feet on the fan descender and the second from the same from a, a slightly lower floor. But he does 100 feet as a free fall, high fall into an airbag. And um, I think it's brilliant. It's majestic. Um, they, of course, they went to RAF Cardington, the airship sheds at RAF Cardington to rehearse because prior to that fall, Roy had done 60 feet, 70 feet, I think, at a push. He'd never gone over 100. And uh, Vic had said, well, you know, this is ideal for you. Vic was then going to go off and do um, a 100-footer off the viaduct for Final Conflict for the Omen picture. Two very different styles, by the way. If you've noticed, when you, when you look at uh, those two falls, um, Vic very much doing a sort of swan dive and uh, Roy working those arms all the way down, arms and legs on the way down. But there wasn't anywhere big enough to rehearse, you know? There wasn't anywhere that you could go to. Nobody nobody got access to a, a cherry picker or a crane at that point, so they had to do it inside, and they managed to find the airship sheds at RAF Cardington, uh, which had... Um, the, the the height of the of the building was large enough to accommodate a scaffolding structure that would allow them to get up and down to the platform and then be in a situation to do the jump. Um, and Vic went first and, and said to Roy, you go up there above me and you watch me go and then um, you'll have a... It's psychological, as we, you know, from, we've discussed it before, but the, the idea is that you look at... You stand outside your house, right, and look from the front door up to the roof and it looks okay you think yeah i could do that it's no problem when you're up there on a ladder cleaning the windows looking down it's a very different kettle of fish and your your body and your brain they they send different messages to each other so it looks much higher when you're up there looking down so the the idea was that roy would go above vic watch you vic fall and then he would come down to that that hundred foot level, and he would go. And it was only the problem, the fact that there was a problem with the airbag, was that he didn't get a chance to do it. So the one, the take that you see in the movie, is him doing his hundred foot fall for the first time. The first one he did, he did a bunch of those uh, years later. Uh, being members of the Ton Up Club, which was the phrase they liked to use at the time. So uh, you know stories like that. And um, a tip coming off that motorcycle, um, tip coming off that motorcycle on on um, on space raiders um, was very impressive. And, and again, you know, long before the days of CGI, you can see the wires there, you can see the wires pulling the bike out of the way. But 
he is doing 45, 50 miles an hour, coming to a stationary point, and then is being shot off uh, into an airbag, in point of fact. And then the the second shot you see of, of uh, Barry uh, flying through the air and landing on the concrete, that's stuntman Lex Malloy. He is thrown, physically thrown, and lands in a big heap uh, there. And incidentally, the connection between Lex and the accident is that Lex Malloy rode the motorcycle that caused the accident in the first place. So hero and villain all in the same place. Um, but for me, you know, Tip's done so many bits and pieces. You remember him, of course, from Aliens as Private Crow. Um, and he crops up in a whole bunch of bits and pieces. But that extraordinary work that he did on Zero Option with Andy Bradford hanging below the plane, absolutely magnificent. Just phenomenal work and then when you find out you know go back and 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 listen to the um to the podcast because you will hear him and andy and roy discussing um the situation there and that they got a great many of those takes already but there was a moment when they were flying low for a ground-based camera to catch them and it became very evident that tip's cable was loose you know it could be seen and so he's jamming his hand up between andy bradford's legs just to try and hide it um and cross winds and 100 miles an hour and he's down far enough you can see him he's a long way down but roy had to lean out reach out and grab onto him and allow him to climb up him to get back into the plane it's magnificent the amount of of energy exerted by all three individuals the two guys outside the plane and roy inside just unbelievable just unbelievable um and the the images of them hanging from the plane as the plane's flying over that's spectacular absolutely spectacular um both men will be and are but will be greatly missed not only now but in years and generations to come people will still be talking about these two individuals uh, because they made such a difference um, to the stunt community Uh, they are missed by those performers and coordinators who work with them and they are missed by those people who never met them that's how important they were uh, to not only the industry but to people as a whole um, and um, personally I would like to thank uh, um, Tip's daughter Sassy uh, for allowing you know uh, allowing us to, uh, to to be able to do this and I know that she was um, she's she's liked some of the posts and bits and pieces in connection with her father so Sass thank you so much uh, lots of love to you and your family and uh, we hope that that's given you a bit of an insight into um, these two extraordinary men. Go off and explore them, please, if you will, on IMDb or find them in the in the credits of a film somewhere and then go and try and find them. Um, and uh, that's uh, if, if you're able to do that and you recognise some bits and pieces and you then go off and explore it, then my job here is done. We will do all of this again next week. And uh, uh, don't forget to check out the Pod Dojo Network. They're the people who are responsible for the podcast. And until next time, it's bye for now.